All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime Loser. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. All right, so today I am hopefully going to finish my Stephanie Spazzy Lazzy Lazarus coverage. For the people that were following this channel, I was commentating on this case when... The old Chris Watts tornado came back around my trailer park and sucked me back up. But, I'm done. So let's finish this. Uh, for the new people that weren't following along, this case is really interesting because a woman named Sherry Rasmussen ends up dead. And the detectives in L.A. come to investigate it and they say, hmm... She's been shot three times, she's been bitten, and her face has been beaten in. Okay, well, sounds like a robbery gone bad. The theory was she came home, there was two people robbing her place, and uh, she came home at a bad time, and they killed her. And this was supported by that there was another robbery down the street the same night. Well, no one was ever arrested for the whole robbery thing. And Sherry Rasmussen, the woman that was killed, all of her friends and all of her family were trying to say, I don't think this was a robbery gone bad. We think that it was her husband's ex-girlfriend. They had been having words. The ex-girlfriend had come to where Sherry works at the hospital and said, you know, tried to intimidate her. Um, what else? They had, the, the friends had said that they had gotten into it once in Sherry's house. and uh, But it just so happens to this friend that all the, or the ex-girlfriend that all the friends are saying, you need to check out this lady. I, we don't think it was the robbery. This lady is the one. Well, this lady is Spazzy Lazzy, Stephanie Lazarus, who happens to be an L.A. PD cop. So, either the cops purposely didn't investigate their own, or they went with the attitude, and it was a cover-up, or they went with an attitude of, come on, it, you really think an L.A. PD cop killed your friend? You watch too much TV. You know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna even go that route because there's no way an LAPD cop is the person that killed your friend. All right. Well, 23 long years went by, and for whatever reason, the homicide rate in 2009 declined massively in Los Angeles, and then. All these homicide detectives had all this time on their hands, so they start handing out all these old cases, and these two detectives get this old case of old poor Sherry Rasmussen, and nothing ever came of the, the robbery, and they're reading through the notes, and Stephanie Lazarus keeps coming up, and they, they, she went to the hospital, and that she couldn't get over Sherry's husband. They had dated in college. His name's John Rutten. This Stephanie Lazarus couldn't get over John Rutten, and so she's trying to intimidate his new wife, and and then it comes out later too that she was still sleeping with Sherry's husband, and I'll get into that at the very end. But you know, all this stuff comes out, and um, they're like, well, maybe we need to look into this cop, right? Got to look into one of our own. And there was a little DNA that was pulled off of a bite mark off of Sherry Rasmussen that they couldn't really do anything with back 23 years before. And then, so the technology, once we get to 2009, had kind of caught up a little bit with DNA. And so they send off this DNA and it comes back as a female. And they were like, oh, spaz face. This could be you. And uh, and then so they follow this, who's now risen to the head art detective. So if like a painting gets stolen, this spaz-faced lady is the one that 
will try to find it for you, I guess. And uh, so they follow her around. They follow her to a food court. She gets a soda. After she drinks it, she throws it in the trash. They, she leaves. They run up. They grab the soda. They send that off. It comes back a match. They're like, oh, my gosh. We got her. And they bring her in 23 years later for a surprise interrogation by saying, hey, you got to come down to the jail uh, we have to talk about something with one of your cases down at the jail. Would you come with us? And so she goes, yeah, they come down to the jail. When you go into the jail, you have to take your gun off and give it to them. Uh, that was the main reason, because you don't want to interrogate someone for murder if they have a gun on them. And so they sit her down, and it's one of the most blindsided interrogations I've ever seen. This woman has no idea... That after all these years, all of a sudden, she's going to have to be answering questions like, did you know John Rutten's wife, Sherry? And we get to see an LAPD detective squirm and melt like a guilty popsicle for an hour and 12 minutes until, until they finally... What's crazy is that this whole... She has no strategy... She has no strategy about for this interrogation whatsoever. So she sits down, and they're like, did you know John Rutten? And her face is like, what? And then, you know, it keeps moving, and she has nothing to say. All she goes with is, I can't remember. I can't, ah, I don't know, I can't remember. And she, in this, she's just drowning, right? She has nothing, and she latches on to a few phrases which throughout this whole thing just become comedic gold and so she's being asked these totally normal questions that should be easy to answer like do you remember where sherry and john lived and just because she was so blindsided her answers just become totally absurd and she'll just be like you know just a normal question like did you know where they live and she'll just be like <laughs> gee I mean I don't know I don't know it was a million years ago I mean I went to UCLA and we, we lived in the dorms and I got I don't know I'll just have to check my pictures and her face is she just does like 19 facial expressions instead of just one every time they ask her something and it's just it's just totally bizarre. So for the first like 40 minutes of this interrogation, they're just asking her normal questions that, and then she's just pained by answering them. Like, um, you know, like what was your relationship with John once he was married to Sherry? Oh, God, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I went to UCLA. I'll have to check my pictures. That's another one of her favorite lines is she has to check her pictures. Like she can't, you know, she can't remember anything because, um, I don't know. And, and so she keeps saying like, I'm a picture nut. I've taken 10,000 pictures. I'll have to check my pictures. So they're like, did you, did you get in a fight at the hospital with Sherry Rasmussen? That's what everyone's saying. And you know, something that you would definitely remember. And it's just absurd. She'll be like, ah, Wow, oh God, I don't, I, I don't know. It was a million years ago. I'll have to check my pictures. And what's nice about that phrase, I'll have to check my pictures, is you can really just take it from her and use it for anything. So say your boss is like, you've really been underperforming this whole year. What's going on? You could be like, wow, yeah, well, that doesn't sound familiar. I'll have to check my pictures, and then I'll uh, get back to you. Um, you know, say your friend is like, hey, like I wrote this new play. Do you want to come see the premiere of it this weekend? Just be like, nah, I got to check my pictures. So thank you. Um, it's a great phrase. Um, yeah, she just keeps going down the wormhole of facial expressions. All right. So I hope that's enough. That's a little bit more background that I wanted to give but this interrogate where we start in the interrogation is 30 minutes in today if you want to 
start at the beginning of Stephanie Lazarus, just go back onto my channel and you can watch the whole thing. But all right, so we're 30 minutes in. And in the other videos I did up to this point, there were people that were like, you're just being repetitive. You're just saying that you're just talking about her pictures over and over again. And it's like, yeah, that's what she's saying. Oh, yeah, another another phrase that she's latched on to is she'll just talk about this gal, Shmita. She'll be like, I don't know if I got in a fight at a hospital. I know that I take pictures, and I do have a friend named Shmita, a gal named Shmita, and she's got, like, two friends named Diane that she keeps bringing up with. They'll just be like, so did you, you know, an easy question. And she'll be like, well, let's see. I mean, God, I do have a friend named Shmita. And, like, people in the other videos were like, you're overusing the Shmita joke. And it's like, no, I'm, she's still saying Shmita more than I'm saying Shmita. Also, I'm naming all my kids Shmita. Boys, girls, everyone. If I ever had kids, they're all being named Shmita. It's by far my favorite name of all time. My pets, my kids, everybody is Shmita. All right. Um... Okay, so like I said, the whole interrogation, they're not even really asking her hard questions. They, she has no idea they have a DNA match. So they're not going to bring that up until the very end because she's just going to, they know that's going to make her quit talking, and it does. Right when they do bring it up, that's when she's like, I want a lawyer. But So they don't really bring up anything until way deep in the thing other than she's just easy questions, and it's just the same answers of her not saying anything um, they'll ask her a question and then she'll talk for the the time that you would think a normal answer but it's just doesn't mean anything so that so they'll say you know did you ever go to their house that was over on Roscoe it's like whoa gee I, mean, I don't know it's like, I have a friend named Shmita, and we all went to UCLA. I can't remember what floor we were on. Uh, I'll have to check my pictures. So that's about her answer for the whole first 45 minutes, which to me becomes very funny after a while. This is a very funny interrogation, and there's something just, there's something just satisfying about this woman that took this lady's life, got away with it for 23 years, lived this great life, went on all these great vacations, moved up to her dream job as a detective, and then finally we just get to see her melt. Um, all right. So she's just up until this point, she really, she's having a hard time, and she knows it, but up until this point she just thinks, okay, this happened 23 years ago. Um and as long as I just deny and don't get caught up in a lie, it's still just my word against theirs. You know, she doesn't know about the DNA evidence. She doesn't really know that they, that Sher a lot of Sherry's friends had been saying, you got to check out this woman. And, um, and, right. and so by 35 minutes, she's getting in, she's kind of getting a little bit, uh, testy, just being, saying, you know, what's this got to do with me? We dated in college, so I killed her? Come on. Trying to say, like, this is absurd. So so I dated someone, and his wife ended up dead, and it's, you think it's me? Come on. And I think there's probably a technical term for that, where people try to make the truth sound absurd. You know, like, come on, I didn't steal. You really think I stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Yeah, I stole the cookie from the cookie jar. Okay, cool. You're just going to think I stole. Meanwhile, I have, like, cookie crumbs all over my head. So I'm sure there's a technical term for that in the interrogation world, but I don't know it. But it's sort of just being confessing, but just sarcastically, just being like, yeah, okay, I, because I dated her husband, then you think I killed her? That's what you think? And they're just still asking her, you know, really easy questions like, do you remember, do you remember if you ever talked to her after you and John broke up? And it's just this, oh, I, you, I mean, let's see, I, I, I have a friend named Shmita, you know, and it's just, uh, 
And she also has to be careful because she's a detective. So she knows that they know the answers to a lot of these questions. So at one point they're like, did you ever talk to a detective like when this happens? And she goes, no. But then she remembers like, oh, that's something they could easily figure out. And she's like, yes. And then she goes, no. And she's just trying to decide like, how do I lie my way out of this, but also not get caught in a lie. Also while making 900 facial expressions per minute. It's not easy. She talks about, let's see, I taught DARE, which is drug awareness resistance or drug something. I don't know. It's this drug awareness thing that we all did in America when we were in school. And this is just a whole, it just failed miserably, right? Like the whole, our whole youth and everyone in America is addicted to heroin. We have this huge problem. And it just cracks me up that here... Stephanie Lazarus was a murderer. So we had a murderer telling kids not to do drugs. It's just the dare was just a huge fail. All right, so then we get into the hospital. They start asking her questions about the hospital fight. And so we had had a lot of fun talking about the hospital fight in the previous videos. But so Sherry, the woman that got murdered, worked at a nurse at a hospital and was like moving way up in the nurses ranks and really successful and old spaz face Lazarus gets all dolled up and uh goes to the hospital to tell probably to tell her like you know John's mine or whatever and so crazy face Lazarus goes to the hospital and they get into this like altercation and so for the first time in this interrogation, this is something that you no matter even if it was twenty three years before, you're gonna remember. So they're like, "Are you sure you didn't get into a fight with her at the hospital? Like that seems like something you would remember." And with all the witnesses in a hospital and cameras and stuff, you know, this is something that Stephanie can't really lie about. So she's like, "Yeah, yeah." Now that you mention it, I we I did go down to the hospital and you know I do have a friend named Shmita and I did you know I'll check my pictures I did go to UCLA in the dorms but um and she's just rambling and I'm sure the detectives this whole time are just looking at each other like well are you seeing this (laughs) she just made 76 facial expressions and when we asked her have do you remember the hospital and so and uh, the timing of the interrogation is really well they really don't show their cards until the very end and uh, you know and then they start asking her how many times did you see did you see Sherry this woman around town did you see her at parties She's like, well, God, I mean, we may have seen, I may have seen her at a party. You know, we, I knew John's sister. You guys get it. It's just the same answer over and over again. But they basically boil it down to everybody saying that you guys got into a verbal altercation at the hospital. And then you got into another verbal altercation at their house. You know, what's the deal? And, uh. You know, she's like, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we talked once. Maybe we talked three times. I I just, I don't remember. It just doesn't sound familiar. And, um, you know, they're thinking, well, you know, they're finally challenging her with like the, you know, it was a million years ago. It was a million years ago. And they're thinking, well, you would remember going to a hospital Um, and then she's like, oh, God, I don't know. I mean, I had a, a friend that he, he's dying, you know, and my other friend is dead. And then at one point, at 56 minutes in, they ask him, or they ask her, do you remember what car he drove? And at 56 minutes and 4 seconds, Stephanie Lazarus' face breaks away from reality and spazzes out 
you know, barrage of facial expressions unlike this world has ever seen. They, they go, do you, do you remember what kind of car he, go, she, he drove? And she just goes, <laughs> and she does this evil laugh, and it's just, it's one of the weirdest things I've ever, th- I think she blew a gasket. I think that she, I think that she couldn't handle it anymore and her face just went in this wormhole of expression of panic and bewilderment and it just is it's just a sight to see. And again, I you can't see the detectives faces during all this, but I'm sure they're sitting there thinking like, "All right, well, her face is expressing wildly." So, it's you know, usually when someone is telling the truth, they don't go. <laughs> and she's making all these. It's totally bizarre. And so, like I said, up until this moment, we're in. There's a whole hour. There's an hour and 12 minute interrogation, and we're an hour in. And really, they haven't asked much other than, like, do you remember this? And it's just like, oh, God, I don't know. My friend Shmita's here. Um, all right, and then then they ask another, um, so the gun that Stephanie used to kill Sherry shot her three times. She reported that gun stolen, and they hadn't brought, <coughs> excuse me, they hadn't brought up that she had a gun stolen um, or anything this whole time, and they asked her, have you ever had any problems with your car? And I'm sure they're just smiling with that mechanical. Have you ever had any problems with your car? And she's like, like what? And, you know, in her head, she's trying to think, where does this question end? You know, where do, where are they trying to get me to go with this? And so she goes, uh, like what? And they're like, anything. Stolen, wreck, you know. Anything stolen? And she goes, no, nothing like that. And then you can hear, you can, you can see her remember. And she goes, oh, it's been broken into. My car has been broken into. Now that you mention it, uh, let's see. I had a gun that was stolen. And I mean, you can imagine just what Stephanie looks like. She just looks like a melted puddle of sickness and guilt at this point. She's lived 23 years with this. And now she's staring at two homicide detectives going like this, talking about her friend Shmita and how her gun was stolen right after it happened And it's the same type of gun. And so she mumbles and rambles about her gun and tries to make it just sound... (laughs) Yeah, you know, my gun got stolen right after. And uh, here's my 75 facial expressions dealing with the fact that I'm here. Uh, And I feel like... If she was a boxer and this interrogation was a bo- was a fight, this would be the moment where her corner just threw in the towel. She's just taken too much punishment on the ropes. They just have her exactly where they have her. Her face is expressing wildly. She's burping now because she says it's because she didn't have breakfast. So she'll. There's something very funny to me about like a normal bodily function in this completely bizarre situation she's in so she's sitting there being like you know my gun was stolen and then she'll burp a little bit and be like oh sorry and the interrogator's like it's okay so then an hour in she goes they're like well Steph here's the deal after just asking her what should be very easy questions which she failed miserably. Um, an hour in, 
It's like, here's the deal. Her friends, Sherry's friends, are all saying you did it. They say that she got in some big fight. At, you guys got in some big fight at the hospital. And you got in another big fight at their place. And you came over unannounced and unwanted. And you got into another fight. And, you know, and you're in the notes for this homicide. And everyone's pointing the finger at you. And you guessed it, she just goes back to her same old answer, but just more, just sadder, just, I don't know. I don't even know these people. It's like they're pointing the finger at me, and I, I don't even, I don't even remember. I'll have to check my pictures. It was a million years ago, okay? And they're like, yeah, all right, well, that makes no sense again, um, and again, she's doing the like sarcastic confession thing. Like they're saying I got in a fight with her, so I must have killed her. I mean, come on, come on. So I got in a little fight with her, and I just killed her. And they're thinking, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what we think. And she, her face is just sick. And you know, they were like, "Well, you think we would think that you would remember getting into a fight at a hospital?" And she goes, well, "I don't know. I mean, I played sports. You get into a lot of altercations when you play sports." And then she just her face goes into La La Land. And they say, "So you don't recall ever going to her house and attacking her?" And her answer is, "Quote, no. I mean, no." No, I mean, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> if you ask someone a question and they answer no, I mean, no, no, I mean, no, 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 not at all, it's a pretty good chance it's just definitely, yes, of course, without a doubt, for sure. I do have a friend, her name is Shmita. And then they really just drop the bomb on her. Well, they say, well, Spaz Face, Spazzy Lazzy, in 86, the, de the detectives did what they could. And she already knows where he's going with it. Those three letters that seal the deal, the DNA. So they're saying, well, you know, Stephanie, the detectives at that time did what they could. And she cuts him off and goes, if you... If you guys, are you calling me a suspect? Are you calling, if, because if you're calling me a suspect, if you're treating this like an interrogation, then I have a problem with that. And they don't really say anything, but you can just feel their energy being like, well, Steph, if you got a problem with that, that's, that is, no one really cares. That's okay if you have a problem with that. And sorry, but this has been an interrogation. That's all this has been. And she's just losing it. And she's like, well, you know, I, I have a problem with that. If this is an interrogation, then, you know, if I'm a suspect, then how would you feel? And, uh, and, and the detective just keeps going with it. He just waits for her to kind of run out of gas. And he goes, you know, they did what they can. And uh, at the time with the whole DNA stuff, but... Now it's come a long way, and so would you be willing to give us a DNA swab to either identify? And she wasn't ready for this, and she has no answer for it. There isn't one, and she's a detective, and so she knows how the thing works, so she can't play dumb. And they say, you know, would you be willing to give us a DNA swab? And she goes, maybe, maybe, you know, because... You know, because I know how this works, okay? I've been doing this detective thing for a long time, and I know how this works. And it's like, you know how what works, Baz? That if your DNA is on a bite mark on a murder victim, you have to go to jail forever? That's Because that's how it works. You know, and she just keeps saying that. She's like, you know, I know how this works. I know how this works, you know. I, and... They say, well, this is, you know, the detectives say, well, this is where we are at. This is where we're at. We need to identify you or eliminate you as a suspect, and this is how we do it. And she just goes, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. And I don't think in my whole life have I heard someone say that phrase. 
I can't believe this and mean it more than Spaz Face Lazarus in that moment. I truly believe that her little existence cannot believe what is happening. She woke up that morning, an LAPD detective, respected, you know, planning probably her next trip to Hawaii. She liked to go on all these trips and take her pictures. And she is now, you know, just sitting there going, I can't believe this. And, uh, you know, at that point, she basically is just like, I need, I want to talk to someone. I can't do it. And so they say, okay. They stand up. They all walk out of the room. And then they... There's, they're out of the room for a little bit, and then I think they basically say, we're going to arrest you for this because we we I think they probably tell her we already have the DNA or whatever. I don't know what they tell her, but then they come in just so it's on camera, and they read her uh, romant, Miranda writes, you know, you have the right to m remain silent. Do you understand? And she's sitting there, and she goes, yeah. And there's a face. There's another final facial expression in this moment at the end, you know, she's probably had around 500 million facial expressions in an hour. And the last one that she ends on is the same facial expression of any cop that you see that's being arrested. They just have this face of like, of like, oh my God, I've thought that I've, I've, I've thought my whole career that I've been better than these people, that I am somehow better than these people that are being arrested, that I'm above them, that I, and now here I am being arrested. I went down a whole YouTube wormhole of cops getting DUIs one time, and it's the same thing. It's like when they, when those cops say, you need to step out of the car, you're wasted. These cops just know it's over. Their career's over. The, the respect that they get from the whole law enforcement thing is over. And they just have this look on this face of like, I'm not any better than these people that I've, that I believed in my soul, in my gut, down into my bones that I've been better. And it's just, it's sort of a, it's sort of a, uh, it's nice, <laughs> you know, in a way it's kind of a, I can't think of the word. But um, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of nice to see sometimes, you know, because a lot of cops walk around with this, like, I'm better. It's satisfying. There's the word. It's kind of satisfying to see. And so Stephanie goes to trial and um, is found guilty. You know, they got the DNA. They got the whole thing. And the weird the last kind of bizarre thing that I want to talk about is that, so at the time, all of Sherry's friends had said, you need to look at Stephanie Lazarus. And the cops, you know, whether it was a police cover-up in the sense that they were like, oh, it's looking like old spaz face over here, but we should, you know, it'll be a circus if an LAPD cop is arrested for murder. So let's just not, you know, that's one. It could have been that, or it could have just been, like I said, where they're like, didn't even look into it because they're like, there's no way it was a cop. Get get out of here. But another reason this case just went cold is, um, so hold on, I'm getting a text. Um, another reason, uh, another weird reason that a lot of people think this case went cold as as Scott or as John Rutten, who was the victim's husband, who had dated. Um, spaz in college and that was the guy that Stephanie Lazarus couldn't get over and so he had told like right away had said you gotta you gotta look at my ex-girlfriend he had told the cops that along with everyone else I think you gotta look at my ex-girlfriend and uh, and they really didn't and then he never he never he kind of just disappeared which made Sherry, the woman that was murdered, her friends really angry at him because it was like, you're her husband. You need to be her, you need to be her cheerleader and be, you know, demanding that these cops keep investigating the murder and, you know, be camped out in front of the police station and demand that they figure this out and demand that they check your, but he just disappeared, right? 
what comebacks later that he was he was still sleeping with Steph, Stephanie Lazarus du- while during the murder or during that time during the murder they were still sleeping together and then after she was murdered they kept sleeping together you know a few times or they like went to Hawaii together and they slept together and so this guy John Rutten thought that this woman that he used to date killed his current wife and then kept on sleeping with her so at the trial this all comes out and that kind of explains I think he just was like I am such a horrible person that I you know one I was having an affair and the woman that I was having an affair with so it's like it wasn't like Stephanie was just totally around for no reason because that you know thinking like Sherry's friends like she he can't she can't get over John but she didn't need to she was sleeping with them at the time and then I think John was like I was sleeping with this woman that killed my wife and then I kept sleeping with her and then so I think he was just embarrassed and just and so he kind of just disappeared and I think that's another reason that the case just went unsolved for a really long time is because he was just like oh god and you know kind of a shit person if to do that and so he disappeared, and the cops, you know, had this murder or this robbery plan that they went with, and DNA wasn't good enough, and, you know, 23 year, long years went by. But they got her. She does have a friend named Shmita, and like she would say, it was all a million years ago. I think that's the show, people. If you would like to support me on Patreon, there's a link in the description. Everybody that participates and comments and likes and subscribes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love you all. True Crime Loser, out. Why, Stiven?